This uh, presentation um, will present some of the results from a very small study we did on a, on a very specific uh, water quality issue in a, in a project um, last year in, uh, in Uganda. So the problem uh, was for, for us uh, that we had no quantification of um, disinfection byproducts at a surface water treatment plant we were running. Um, the solution was to train uh, some of the staff uh, working at the plant to field trial a testing kit. And the benefits from this, of course, uh, were to ascertain the safety of the water being supplied, uh, but also uh, to develop uh, some thinking around recommendations uh, for the future, or the approach, in, indeed the approach to be taken to this uh, specific issue in the future. So the context uh, just... Um, Briefly go through, uh, some of you of course will be aware of the intervention or certainly aware of the refugee uh, crisis, um, so, uh, refugees from South Sudan coming into to northern Uganda and uh, some of the largest uh, refugee camps uh, in the world in, in, in the area. Uh, we as uh, MSFOCA uh, responded um, in Palarina settlement, um, as the camp is, uh, is called, at the beginning of um, 2017, um, due to a, there was an existing uh, settlement there, but it was a massive uh, influx of, of people over the course of, uh, of, a, few, uh, of a few weeks, um, tens of thousands uh, of people. You can see some of the scenes here when people uh, arrived, and this is where we're talking about um, and fortunately, uh, in some senses, the, the site was reasonably close to uh, part of the, the River Nile, um, which you can see in this uh, reproduction of the Google Earth uh, image. Um, our activities included medical activities, but uh, the biggest gap initially, of course, was uh, the basics, uh, that is, food and, uh, and water. And so we started um, a surface water treatment uh, uh, project here in this location on the, on the Nile, and the water would be, uh, would be trucked uh, into, into the camp from there, um, all the trucks being contracted by, uh, by UNHCR and uh, Lutheran World Federation. So uh, this gives a, a bit of an, uh, an idea of what it looked like at the time. Significant in terms of the water quality issue that I'm talking about here is that there was a very marshy area upstream from the, from the river. Uh, good in one sense because this gave some filtration to the water, but uh, it also added a lot of natural uh, organic matter to the water. So the, there was a very phased approach to the intervention. Uh, we started uh, initially just um, pumping and chlorinating the water directly from the river into the trucks. Uh, we had, uh, when we first arrived, no, no equipment uh, um, to, to set anything up. It quickly arrived, but that's how, how it started. Uh, luckily, the river water was, uh, was relatively uh, clear or clear enough so that we could directly chlorinate. Uh, but then in the second phase, we set up a more temporary, um, uh, or more, sorry, somewhat more permanent uh, treatment system, and then moved on to, to what we handed over in the end to the, to the, Red, uh, to the Red Cross. Um, and this included a laboratory uh, within the water treatment plant. We were monitoring both the raw water quality and the treated water quality for a number of uh, parameters. Um, and then, and part of that was monitoring uh, the treatment process uh, it, itself, which involved the addition of uh, chemical coagulants, uh, then flocculation, sedimentation, and of course disinfection with, with chlorine, as is the standard uh, in this kind of intervention. Um, so water quality monitoring also included within the camp itself as well. So we have a comprehensive uh, suite of data on uh, everything that we sent into the camp. So disinfection byproducts, what are they? I mean, it's, uh, it's a big, big uh, subject. It's a big subject of, uh, of interest and some concern within the water supply sector uh, in, in every uh, country, uh, particularly for, for surface water treatment um, plants. 
Um, what we are most uh, concerned about, or what we were most concerned about, was uh, um, products called uh, byproducts called trihalomethanes, uh, and there's just a kind of uh, generic representation there of what those are, um, and. Uh, they are formed by the addition of disinfectants, and we use chlorine, but there are also trihalomethanes produced uh, with the addition of other disinfectants um, as well. Uh, we know some basic uh, facts about those, that uh, the production of those byproducts increases with the chlorine dose, increases with the amount of uh, natural organic uh, matter, um, and then also with temperature, contact time, and with pH. So the health concerns of trihalomethanes, it's quite obviously there's, uh, there's, quite a, there's a lot of literature on this. Like I said, it has been, a, uh, it is a concern in, in most water treatment uh, um, operations. Um, the, the, the thing for, for, for us in the humanitarian sector, it's not uh, something that is looked into in, uh, in much detail. Part of that is because, and especially for us as MSF, we feel like we're intervening in an emergency. There are priorities in an emergency which go beyond um, what we might see uh, or what we might determine as risks after extended uh, exposure. So we are talking about uh, trihalomethanes being associated in epidemiological studies uh, with uh, uh, a risk of bladder cancer overextended uh, exposure. And there are considered to be some minor effects uh, from high trihalomethane exposure during pregnancy as well. Um, with respect to fetal growth, uh, the, there's, there's, other, the, there's other outcome, potential outcomes. There's a lot of literature, there's a lot of uh, argument and counter argument, and there's nothing uh, in any of this that is, uh, is that conclusive. Um, but it does lead uh, most regulatory bodies, national or otherwise, uh, to set guideline, uh, guideline values. And uh, we represent here WHO guideline, um, which sets one for 300 uh, parts per billion uh, for, for chloroform. So that just gives a very uh, brief overview. This references there to, to many, uh, many studies. Um, so, in terms of what we were doing uh, for the water supply, of course, as per standard, we want to ensure that there is uh, residual chlorine at the tap stand when people come to take the water. Um, chlorine de de decays over time in, in water, uh, and because of uh, the nature of the water treatment, the nature of the water that we, that we were using there, we need to set a, a higher target at the surface water treatment plant to ensure that by the time the population takes the water, that uh, there's still the required residual amount at the household level um, up to 24 hours uh, later. So this is why we were doing a comprehensive uh, range of monitoring um, uh, at the plant and in the camp. And based on that, we were able to adjust at the plant uh, what we wanted to see go into the trucks. So we had a target of uh, 1.5 milligrams per liter of free residual chlorine. Um, and out of the, this represents the results from 322 uh, samples. Um, we didn't do too badly at all. And then also in terms of the target at the tap stands, it was also uh, not bad considering the quality of the water, the fact that some truck drivers would take the water the night before, sit in the market, not deliver it until the next day. You can imagine uh, water trucking is far from an ideal means of delivering uh, water to people. But um, so this had a, a, an influence, obviously, like I said, on the production of trihalomethanes. It's a reasonably uh, high level of uh, free residual chlorine. So uh, yeah. And uh, what we decided to do. Um, in terms of quantifying better what we might be seeing in terms of uh, disinfection byproducts. Um, we searched around for the appropriate equipment, came across uh, this uh, equipment here produced by HACK, um, which 
we also found had a good correlation with some of the standard uh, methods that are used in laboratories uh, around the world. It had also, we found literature where it had been used as a method in a Bulgarian surface water treatment plant and also in, uh, in the US in, in uh, Arkansas as well. What did we find in terms of uh, results? It's not the, it was not the simplest piece of lab equipment to use, but we managed to train the, the, the staff to use it, use it well. Um, we found, uh, and the results of, what we, we, of most of the tests are here, we found that uh, with the standard treatment method that we were doing, which was splitting the sedimentation and the disinfection, that we were uh, compliant uh, with the, below the 300 uh, parts per billion um, set by the WHO. And even, uh, it's a long story to go into it, but uh, earlier on in the intervention, we had a different uh, means of treatment, which was combining uh, some of the processes, and that's where there were likely to be higher risks. Uh, even then, we were compliant with WHO uh, uh, standards. So, uh, what were the lessons learned? Well, top one I've already uh, mentioned. And then, um, yeah, the, we know that emergency treatment methods are likely to, 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 to present more of a, a, a risk and that we should move to standard water treatment processes as soon as possible. That part is, uh, is, uh, is obvious, uh, really. Um, but beyond that, we know as well from the literature research that was done into it that this is a fantastically complicated um, problem. There are many disinfection byproducts, and not all of them, uh, there's a few trihalomethanes, but beyond that, there's many more. Um, so, in terms of recommendations for the future, the first one I have to make, and that is that regardless of whatever risks there might be perceived in what is done, the quantity of water provided to people is uh, the most important uh, thing above anything else. But of course, working on the quality should come as soon as possible. And I think that's what we were trying to do here. We were trying to push that as soon as possible, uh, closer you know, to, to, to get into those things as quickly as possible. I, I think, uh, and the recommendation that comes from this, is that we should be monitoring these uh, disinfection byproducts at, uh, at these plants that, we, uh, that we're running. Um, and we should investigate as well uh, alternative treatment methods which might uh, mitigate the, the, the risk of their production. Um, and the last point also is something that we found doing these uh, quite large-scale surface water treatment plants um, in several interventions is that we must always assume that these plants are going to be running for a long time into the future. And we know that uh, that will be the case in, in Palerinia. That's great timing. Thank you very much. Spot on. A bit rushed, yeah. <laughs>